Hello and welcome to the Angerati studio at European Utility Week. Uh, we're we have the pleasure of being joined by Tom Siebel, who is the CEO of C3 Energy. But uh, Tom, as many as you know, um, you have, this is not the first time you've done this. So uh, Siebel Systems was the fastest growing software company. And uh, uh, you had a hu huge success and huge track record with that. And the immediate question is, obviously, where someone with your experience and your depth of insight into uh, market gaps, market opportunities, what are you seeing in the utility industry that makes you look at the offering that you've got now and feel that the utility industry is ready for the type of solutions that C3 Energy has built? If you look at what's going on in information technology, we have a very significant step function of technology that's coming online now and in the middle of this decade. Yeah. And these technologies include the sciences of big data, cloud scale computing, uh, high powered analytics, and these new and very important and intimate social human computer interaction models. And C3 Energy is about applying the science of those technologies to the value chain associated with power generation, transmission, distribution, metering, and energy efficiency. And we find that through the, um, and so this is very much associated with this great upgrade that's going on globally to make the devices in this value chain remotely machine addressable, what we call the smart grid. Mm. Well, the confluence of these technologies affords enormous social, economic, and environmental benefit. And so that's what C3 Energy is all about. So, so it's that platform which um, some of the other companies at the show where they're, they're building the smart grid, they're, they're enabling the fact that this data can all be harvested and potentially put into one place, and we were talking off air, you, uh, put, uh, you gave me some staggering numbers that actually you can put it in one place, and then the very act of putting all that data uh, into one place, what are some of the numbers associated with that in terms of the benefit to the utility for doing that in the first place? Because a lot of interviews I do, people are saying, oh, we, we kind of like to do that, but we, we don't really know what's in it for us. Why, why, why should we do it? Our, 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 our meter reading model is perfectly fine. Why should we join that operational IT uh, uh, up with uh, mainline IT and so on? You know, you, you don't launch a company like C3 Energy without having done a deep dive into what the business benefits are for your customers. C3 Energy, at C3 Energy, we spent the last four years and now about $130 million building a technology stack okay, that allows utility operators and society at large to realize the economic and environmental benefits that are offered by the promise of all these technologies that are being provided in the show today. Right. All these technologies that will make, that make this grid infrastructure remotely machine addressable. And, and so what we do is we enable utility operators to aggregate all of their operational data, OMS systems, DMS systems, customer management systems, meter data management systems, billing systems, uh, rates, rebates, and what have you and aggregate all their operational data, take the union of that, okay, and uh, that we store in a federated normalized image in the cloud. So for a large utility, this might be a 100 to 300 terabyte image. This is not, this is not only a lot of data when we think of big data, okay, these are all of the data, okay? And then we subject these data to a nuclear reactor level analytics engine looks for correlations, relationships, gaps, and connections, and we manifest these insights in application portals that, uh, that analytics that offer very significant value to utility operators and society at large. 
Uh, some of these analytics would include things like energy efficiency applications, demand response, uh, AMI operations, AMI revenue protection, volt VAR, and what have you. Now, we retained the An McKinsey Energy team uh, to do a very thorough analysis of the economic benefit of these applications to utility operators. And it's quite significant. We know that you know, revenue protection, for example, to a U.S. utility is worth, worth about $10 a meter a year. Um, uh, AMI, uh, fault prediction and analysis, $22 a meter a year. If we look at Pacific Gas and Electric, for example, the economic benefit of energy efficiency applications uh, are about $250 million a year. The entire stack, to if we look at a, at a, at a, at a um, organization with, say, 8 million meters, the entire stack, the economic benefit of the utility is $2.7 billion a year. So it's, these are staggering benefits. Uh, aside from, you know, the social benefits are significant, you know, you know uh, reduced outages, higher reliability, more safe power, and the environmental benefits are, 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 are equally staggering, giving us the opportunity to reduce the greenhouse gas footprint associated with green operations by as much as 50%. So it's, the, the benefits are hard, they're measurable, they're concrete, and they're real. And, and that's what happens when you get the entire data set, I mean, I, I was reading about it a lot, it's just like going, you use statistics because you could never see the whole picture. That's why you use statistics, that's why you have terms like within statistical probability and things like that, and we were talking off air a, a, a little bit, is that now having all of the data, so you've got the entire picture, you can see completely different correlations than you would with just doing extrapolations and running simulations. Uh, are there any examples of that that, that that you can draw out? I'm not asking you to name names of customers, but some of the correlations where your team have looked at something and you're like going, well, that's interesting. We would have never seen that if we had not have had all of the data, or is it still too early in that journey to sort of pull out a specific example? Well, well, first of all, I think your, your discussion of statistics is very interesting because when we're dealing with big data, statistics don't matter anymore. There, there are no sampling. Statistics is the science of dealing with sampling errors and small sample sizes. When we have all of the data, there are no sampling errors. Okay? I mean, it's all there. Um, you know, the types of insights that are available from being able to connect you know, customer data with grid data, with reliability data, you know, are, are, are very important. For example, we can recognize the fact that all customers aren't equal. You know, the hospital is more important than the smoke shop. You know, all, 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 all you know, uh, um, all... Um, so, so there's that, that, that ability to say that if there's a disaster, safeguard this area because it is a hospital. All transformers are not the same. I and mean, we're yeah. able to go into these systems and give every asset in the system a real-time uh, risk index based on, you know, who's the customer, the age of, uh, of the asset, the maintenance history of the aspect, the impact of weather, geopolitical upheaval. And so we, we, we know, you know, what are the threats to the grid at any and every point in time and so as we make these capital investments, which are huge, I mean, Duke Energy, for example, will, will invest you know, $12 billion in grid upgrades in the next few years, okay? Well, we can invest these, we can invest these dollars not with a, where they'll be most efficacious, where we can have dramatic increases in reliability and safety uh, for our most important customers. And the obvious question, and Hollywood does us no favors on this with, uh, with all the uh, films coming out about, uh, apparently it's really easy to hack into places, you know, you, you just, I, I remember a scene out of Swordfish where Hugh Jackman was hacking into a central network just by typing on two keyboards like that. Um, but it is a valid question, and you put all of this data into the cloud effectively. W what are the sort of data security implications of that uh, in terms of protecting that data and making sure that, you know, it, it's behind, I don't know, nine firewalls or what have you? Well, I think that, you know, there's a traditional thought 
uh, on, the, on the behalf of many corporations, including utility operators, that the safest place that they can keep data is behind their own firewall. Now, that may have been true back in the day of core memory when you needed a forklift to remove a device out of the building. But I would say that today, you know, behind the firewall, you know, might be the least secure place to, to, to secure one's data. I mean, you know, you know, anybody, you know, with a device like this, see, you know, the National Security Administration for details, see the Department of State for details. If they can't secure the data, I mean, you as a business, as a utility operator, what are your chances? Yeah. I mean, the same. The safest place to secure the data is in cyberspace, and so we can put the we can put these data in you know highly secure virtual private cloud infrastructures with complete you know NERC five compliance, and we can we can make the data impenetrable. And uh, so where we we'll, we'll used to think of as safe is probably the most vulnerable place to put data, and that's behind the firewall. And, and the, that's the kind other of ironic, is, isn't it, as well? Let me, right. let me follow on. Yeah. The corollary of this relates to cloud-scale computing. Okay. The amount of data that we're dealing with, operational data that creates these images, you know, a million meters of data will generate, say, you know, 30 to 40 billion rows of data that need to be loaded into the cloud. And these need to be kept current every day. Well, we're dealing with, we're dealing with, you know, a 10 million meter utility. I mean, we're dealing with extremely large data sets. These could be 100, 200, 300 terabyte data sets. And we're not, there is not enough processing power behind anybody's firewall to be able to process these, this much data. And we need, you know, a massively parallel, um, you know, infinitely expandable infrastructure, which these cloud infrastructures afford. So the problem is it just can't be done behind the firewall. These are big data cloud computing problems. And this, this in the future, hard stop, is just where computing will be done. And it's also one of the other discussions I had is, is that going by having specialist companies like C3 Energy look at that, you can bring to play the data scientists and the people who can look at that data, extrapolate meaningful stuff into it. It's not scalable, I would imagine, for each and every utility to hire the same team of data scientists to be able to do that because you end up building up a specialism, a, a way of viewing that data, which can then bring mass benefit to all the, all the utilities as well. Um, because I, I read somewhere that uh, data scientists are in short supply and that they, that, that they're the type of people who uh, you keep them interested by giving them different problems every day rather than the type of people who sit in one energy company and maybe do the same problem the whole time. Uh, I believe that at C3 we've attracted some of the foremost data scientists, uh, big data engineers, um, uh, enterprise computer scientists, and, uh, so, and, and people who are experts in social computer uh, interaction models, really some of the most foremost experts on the planet. We've invested today about $130 million in this technology stack, and I estimate we'll, we'll, we'll invest you know, approaching a billion in the next decade, you know, before we're done. So this is a very, very large investment. Mm. And I think one that is difficult, number one, it's risk prone. It's not simply something where you can throw a hundred or a thousand programmers at it. I mean, my colleagues and I who are working on this, we've been working on these problems for 30 years. Yeah. And we have some experience. These are, these are very challenging problems. I think it's virtually impossible for a utility operator to replicate the stack itself. And uh, it, we're offering you know, enormous economic benefit, scalability, reliability, safety, impenetrability, uh, and it's a, it's a, you know, it's a very, very exciting prospect. I've, in my career, I've not been, which is now Span this, you know, three decades yeah. uh, in the information technology business. I've been unable to talk. I mean, we're in many discussions with utilities, with customers, where the economic benefit to them is 200, 300, 400, 500 million dollars a year. This is the social benefits are significant, the environmental benefits are huge. This is really fun, it's important, and it's our hope that when we're done, 
we're going to have the opportunity to make a contribution to one of the most critical dialogues that's taking place on Absolutely. the planet. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, w w when I look at, uh, back at your time at uh, Siebel Systems, there, there is another alliance that has come back with C3 Energy. You've got a partnership with Accenture, um, which I would imagine is, uh, th that's quite an important partnership for C3 as well, isn't it? It's a very significant partnership. You may recall that at Siebel Systems in 1995, we formed an alliance with Accenture where they led with Siebel as their CRM solution worldwide, and we led with Accenture as our integration solution. This enabled us to engage in large-scale systems integration everywhere on the planet. As a result of that, we became the world's leading provider of sales, marketing, and customer service systems, and by 2002, had over 70% market share in every market that we operated, sales, field service, internet service, what have you. Uh, as it relates to smart grid and analytics, this is a billion and a half dollar software market. It's growing at a 24% compound annual growth rate. Uh, we're looking at a $5 billion software market in 2017. Nobody's got more than 1% share. Uh, the so the opportunity is yeah. The opportunity is here to establish a leadership position. Yeah. Uh, we formed an alliance with, with Accenture. We're Accenture we're, we're leading with Accenture as our systems integrator worldwide, mm -hmm. and we're involved at say a dozen very large-scale utilities and very large-scale system deployments today. And Accenture is leading with C3 Energy as its smart grid analytics solution. Our objective is to bring value to our customers and uh, to bring you know, the world's you know, leading software products to market and the change management, business management, and operational expertise that's going to be necessary for these utility operators to realize the benefits that can accrue to them. Th uh, thanks for that, Tom. And, and I know you've got um, uh, another meeting to go to, and we're coming to the end of our time, uh, unfortunately, because th there are many other questions in my head, which perhaps we'll do another time. Uh, it's been a pleasure to see you again and uh, hear how excited you are about this opportunity. And, uh, and I hope you can mirror some of that Siebel success uh, here. I'm not going to jinx it by saying it's going to be better than that, but the one thing that I think is unique is the work you've done, um, certainly which you alluded to earlier with uh, Mackenzie, about getting some of those hard, fast figures that you can bring to, you t uh, to the utilities. And once again, thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for watching this uh, interview with uh, Tom Siebel, the CEO of uh, C3 Energy. There are many more interviews at European Utility Week uh, coming up on the, on the website and uh, on the portal throughout the time. And remember, you can access all the presentations, all of the conference presentations on angerati.com. Thank you for watching.